Hey guys, Walsh here with another video. Today I'm looking at the AH64D Apache Longbow, originally done by No Done It and Franz. It's uh, more recently been picked up by a dude named Voodoo that's giving it a lot of real time attention um, as it goes. Um, there's a couple keys to use this mod that you're going to want to have bound uh, in your options and controls. Go to your custom controls and then make sure you bind use action 20 to a button that uh, is easily accessible. I've bound mine to mouse 4, uh, but you can use it for whatever you want. What use action 20 is for is, uh, you see that green X in front of me? Uh, that's in the center of your view. That's how you interact with buttons in the cockpit. You put that green X on something that's clickable, and then you use that button 20, and that would simulates a key press or a pushing down on the button. Um, two other in here that I would definitely um, bind is use action 2 and use action 3. Those uh, manipulate the MFD screens. They, they flip to the next page on the MFD screens. They're very handy. The other stuff in here is um, none of it is necessary to the, the operation of the aircraft. It's all just really handy. I think this one is um, turning my radar on and the other one I, I can't remember. But the one that's absolutely crucial is number 20 for the interaction the one that's nice to have is two and three for the mfd pages so um another thing to note with this green x is that i have track ir so it just goes where i'm looking if you don't have track ir or you need a little bit finer control you can jump out of the cockpit and then you'll have a scroll wheel option for something called turn head tracking on just go ahead and turn that on then when you hop back in um that X will still more or less be in the center of your view as you move around, but if you use your if you move your mouse, you'll have additional control over it. However, it's pretty um, it's really jerky and there's no fine control. It, it it slides around, so it's kind of annoying. Okay, um, so for this vid, I'm going to talk briefly about the systems in here um, for the pilot perspective. And then uh, we'll run through a startup procedure because it was a little difficult to figure out the first time I was in here. <clears throat> I'm going to do a subsequent vid from the gunner uh, perspective that talks about the systems you'll you'll use when you're gunning and how to lock up and engage targets from the gunner position because it's a little more complicated than a regular UH or AH-64 that's in the mod pack. Okay, so the first the layout of the cockpit. Over here is going to be our starting panel. That's where we are going to basically interact with the aircraft to start it up. This is unused. This stuff's unused. You've got your left MFD and your right MFD. Those are multifunction displays. Over here, we've got our fire systems panel. Um, up here, it's dark right now, but that's our uh, upfront display, our UFD. Over here, we have um, gauges, steam gauges, and then this stuff. None of this down here is used. Um, pilot and gunner doors. Uh, I'm going to power up these MFDs just so I can run through the MFDs real quick. This round rotary right here is the battery switch. So you just click on that and uh, the battery will kick on. One other thing that I should actually note, I've turned off my um, uh, uh, gauges. I have them disabled right now just because they'll clutter up. I, I would turn them on again before flight, especially because uh, your gauge that's up here has your RPM and torque warnings, and um, this thing is uh, at the high range. It it will go. It'll over RPM. So be really careful. Um, the the audible warning for it is really low. So you can't really hear it. You just have to listen for a change in the rotor blades or keep your eye up there. So it's best to turn those gauges back on. This mod is designed to only work with AFM. So you've got to fly AFM as we do in the cab anyway. You also have to turn off stress damage. Um, if you don't turn off stress damage as you're flying around, you'll just torque your rotor right off. Um, and that's the specific thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'm afraid might keep it out of the cab. Is that There's no workaround for that. So... We'll see. But anyway, stress damage off, um, gauges you should have on. I just have them off for the sake of this video. <clears throat> now, look at our MFDs here. Let's start with our left MFD. 
and I have a key here set to cycle through all of them. So uh, the first MFD is the fuel page. This just shows fuel in different areas around the helicopter. None of the OSBs or these buttons on the outside uh, are functional. They don't do anything. Next page, this is the weapons page. Uh, currently selected weapon is the gun. And then you can use these OSBs down here to uh, switch between uh, other weapons, um, missiles, rockets, and then back to the gun. Uh, ATA does nothing. It's inert. More of that would be covered in the gunner's um, video. This is the WCA page, or warnings, uh, cautions, and advisories. And um, basically, it's just going to, if there's something wrong, a system that's off, this is where it will show you. As you can see right here, it's telling us that the canopy's open and the rotor brake is on. Um, that information is also repeated on your upfront display right here, canopy open, rotor brake on. This is basically, um, and they, they just replicate the same data. This is the flight page. Uh, it's just a flight instruments, as you're familiar with from um, most anything. So and then back to the uh, fuel page. So this one just cycles one, two, three, four. MFDs is all that are available on that screen. You can go from the uh, WCA page to the data management uh, systems right here, DMS. Um, but it, this is just an incomplete page. Nothing on it functions other than moving. Um, you can use a couple of these o uh, OSBs to move back to a different page, but none of these other things function whatsoever so and you can't page off using the shortcut you actually have to use one of these OSBs to get out of there and then you can page through your your pages normally <clears throat> the right MFD cycles through some different ones um, by default here we are on the um, this is the uh, uh, TSD page or uh, tactical situational display Right now it's black. You can turn on a background by clicking the map here, uh, which will make it a little easier to see stuff once you add in uh, waypoints or what have you. Um, this used to be in a map of Altus, but something's broke right now, so it's just a textured background. Uh, a lot of the stuff on this functions, um, and we'll get into that in a short while. Uh, next page, this is the FCR, Fire Control Radar page. This is the radar, and um, that's covered more in the gunner thing, but that's uh, whoops, where the magic happens. And this is also the WCA page. This is replicated on both screens, so we've already discussed what's on that. This is the uh, ASE page. It's basically a, a RAR, a radar warning receiver page. It will show threats and contacts. You are Your aircraft is represented by the center circle, but um, uh, let me see. Auto page, this OSB functions. I haven't figured out quite what it does yet, and nothing else on here really functions. I think that this isn't a completed page either. Um, and then this is our engine page. This monitors engine temperatures and, and spool ups and all that stuff. And we're back to your uh, tab. I'm sorry, your TAD, TSD. That's it for the MFDs. I'm going to go ahead and switch off the battery now. <clears throat> and this is how you will walk up to the bird, uh, and we'll just go through the start procedure. It's a very simple. Um, start by closing both the doors using the scroll wheel. Then turn on your battery. Just below the battery, this little box is the APU, or auxiliary power unit. Give that a click, you'll hear it spool up. It's going to get kind of loud for a moment, I apologize. Turn on the rotor brake, I'm sorry, turn off the rotor brake, it's this switch here. And now we can move our, uh, let me just turn the sound down so it's not killing you. Now, we're going to kick up our engine levers. You see this mark right here? I'm just going to click on that mark on each side. Um, Purist would start one engine at a time. So I've just started the, uh, the left engine there. 
and you could monitor engine one right here as it spools up. As I said, purists would do one, monitor it, make sure it's good, then switch to the other and monitor it. I'm just, for the sake of getting us done, I'm going to kick them both up. And you just monitor those as they come up. While we wait for the engines to spool, we'll turn on our fire suppression systems. There we go. And one is stable, two is coming up, it's almost there. And two is up and stable. Now we're going to kick these up to the next uh, indentation, which is the fly setting. This one here. Kick that one. And kick that one. And those engines have both come up. So we're good to go. Engines are spooled. We'll switch off our engine page. Um, as you can see on our uh, warnings page there, the APU is still on. So we'll want to go ahead and get that turned off. And you just do that by clicking on your APU again. And up front's clear, so we've got a clean aircraft spooled up and ready to go. Use your scroll wheel option, and you can use the IHADS toggle. This is your helmet-mounted sight that helps you, uh, well, navigate because there's no heads-up display or anything. Um, so that's turned on and off via the scroll wheel. You can also put on the uh, HDU PNBS, which is, it's going to put a night vision box around that, uh, around your, your helmet mounted sight. Okay, I'm going to just turn off the iHads for a second because I'm going to go over the one really interesting wrinkle that this has um, from a pilot perspective and that is we can create our own waypoints um, so you go to your uh, TSD page here and down here it's in nav that's what we wanted in uh, you can switch that between nav and attack but nav is what we want nav you see this double zero right here that's our position and what we want to do is add a couple waypoints. Um, to do that, you click Add right here. Oop. That'll throw a, a warning on the top, but it's not a big deal. You can see on the bottom left it says Waypoint Configuration Activated. Uh, now go to your map screen, and then just left click on the map. That'll create a waypoint. You see right there, it's created Waypoint 1. And now I'll click I don't know, way over here, create waypoint 2. Okay, once you've placed your waypoints on the map, go back to your uh, TSD, and you need to store these waypoints in this in the uh, computer. You do that by pressing XMIT right here. There you can see, waypoints are saved. Now they're saved in the system. Um, you can also, if you made a mistake, you can delete your waypoints. Or let's say you finished that flight plan and you want to file a new one, just click delete. That will delete all your waypoints. Uh, you can also add waypoints on this screen itself. Click add, and then just click on the screen, and it'll put a waypoint where you're looking. Um, that was really handy back when the screen actually had the map on it, like the satellite image of the map. Since that's broken right now, it's really not uh, as useful. So, go ahead and delete those. And then go back to add waypoints. Just to add those to one more time. And again, once you're happy with the waypoints, Go ahead and click Transmit or XMIT to save them. Now those are saved in the system. You can see that they're indicated here 
on our uh, TSD. Waypoint 1 is right up there off our nose. Waypoint 2 is off that away somewhere. Um, if we go to our uh, flight instrument page, it's automatically queued up on the next waypoint, uh, which is going to be waypoint uh, 1. And if I turn on my iHads here, you look at the iHads, if you look at the bottom left of the iHads there, it says W1, 1.2. That indicates that uh, the currently selected waypoint is waypoint 1, and it's one and a half clicks away from our current position. Um, there's also a time block underneath it. Once you're flying and you're at a stable speed, that time block will be relatively accurate to uh, the time of arrival at the uh, waypoint, given your current heading. Um, this iHads has a whole bunch more information on it. Um, it's all covered in detail in the manual. We don't need to go into that in this. Uh, it's in the manual that will be linked in the video. Um, the other pertinent part of the iHads four waypoints is the heading carrot. It's that carrot or that triangle at the top right now. It's at about uh, 043 degrees right there um, with the line under it. And that carrot is uh, the heading carrot. That's where you would want to fly um, to hit your waypoint. So let's uh, go towards this first waypoint here. And as you can, if you watch in the bottom left there, as we fly towards this waypoint, our uh, uh, distance is ticking down. We're at currently 0 0.9. And coming down and the seconds to arrival are coming down as well so if we hit our waypoint relatively close it will automatically kick over to the next one so if you watch the block there as we pass the waypoint I'm a little off but you should see it as we pass here there we go we just passed the waypoint and it kicked a waypoint two. So if you look at the block it's W2 Waypoint 2 is 3.2 clicks, and you see the carrot up there is off to the right, indicating in order to make the next waypoint, we need to turn to the right, get that carrot uh, locked up on the center, and we'll be heading towards that waypoint. Okay, now we're on a heading for that waypoint, as you can see we're locked up there, and it is 2.2 clicks away from us right now. And if we maintain this current speed, we will be there in about 20 seconds. Um, that time is a little wonky, but I've found it to be pretty accurate. Uh, one and a half clicks now as we approach. And it's telling us we're about 13 seconds away. Just under a click now. 0.8, and it's telling us that we're seven seconds away. So we now, as you can see on our screen down there as well, we're now pulling into the waypoint, and there we go. Uh, last thing I should mention is on this one, the uh, rockets are a weapon that you may sometimes fire. And this big eye, I have the rocket selected right now. This big eye in the center of the screen is your um, aiming reticle for the rockets. So normally every weapon uh, in here is going to be controlled by the uh, weapons officer or the, um, the gunner up front, but uh, you will find yourself sometimes in a situation where you're going to use your rockets in a fixed setting, and in that case it's best for the gunner to relinquish control to the pilot so that he can... Um, orient the aircraft in the way that he wants to. And then the last thing that I'll point out is the um, the alternate optics for the pilot. If you click your uh, optics button, uh, the pilot has access to uh, the P PNS. I can't remember exactly the acronym for it, but um, it is that camera mounted thingy. Will it show me the outside? Yeah, it's that sucker right on the nose of the aircraft that camera optic suite up there um, you do have access to that and you can slave some weapon systems to it as well it has lots of uh, measures of zoom and optics abilities um, so that's a cool feature again that's covered uh, in much more detail in the manual there's no need for us to get into all that and uh, 
Uh, I can't figure out how the heck to get out of it now. There we go. And that's it, guys. So that's an overview on the pilot functionality. Sorry, the video ran a little long. Uh, if you want to watch the next video, that will have all the fun stuff as far as the gunning uh, and gunnery in it and how to operate those systems. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day, y'all. See ya.